Friends, good morning. It is a joy to have you here as we come together as God's people for worship. And I am joined by three of my very good friends, Miss Georgia, Sophia, and Abigail. And we have some very important announcements for you. And we're going to start, excuse me, with Miss Abigail. What's your announcement for us? This is Jesus' table for Maiden Grace. This is Jesus' table. Amen. Miss Georgia, do you have an announcement for us? That's right. We're carrying the water and we'll pour it in. And we are the baptized children of God. That was wonderful. And I'll take this. Jesus is the light of the world, and he says you are the light of the world, too. Let's give thanks to God for Sophia, Abigail, and Georgia. Oh, friends, it is good to be with you in the house of worship. You'll notice that my friend Shanna is not here with me. She is with her father, experiencing some medical concerns in Rupert. So you're stuck with me for all of our announcements today. But a few announcements. You'll notice the fan going on in the side of the sanctuary. We are trying to maintain a safe community here at Covenant during this time when we're coming out of the pandemic. So where we're circulating a lot of air to keep fresh air in the sanctuary. And I also know that we're good Presbyterians and our vaccine rate amongst our population 12 and over is, we don't keep track, but I'm pretty sure it's above 95%. So on a Sunday morning, I feel relatively safe here. We do ask two things. One, that you follow the CDC guidelines. Uh, so if you are not vaccinated, please wear a mask. And if you are vaccinated, follow those CDC guidelines for you. And the second thing that we ask to make sure that we stay safe is that when we sing, Regardless of your vaccination status, if you would wear a mask, that would be really helpful just to make sure that for those who have not yet had the opportunity to be vaccinated, those kids 12 and under, that we try to maintain a safe community there. In your pews, there are prayer cards and welcome cards. If you have a prayer request, you can grab one of those and you can put it in the offering box in the back of the sanctuary at any time during the service. And if this is your first time here, we would just love to grab a contact number for you, email address, just to do some follow-up because maybe you liked it today and we would love to get to know you. Or maybe you had a terrible experience and we would love to know what we didn't do well because we are a growing congregation in the west side of town and we're just really grateful for the opportunity to build a growing community that is centered on Jesus Christ. One of the ways that we grow is we intentionally reach out into our community and we are in the midst of a backpack drive. We are collecting supplies for our four partner schools in the community. McMillan, Frontier, Eustick, and Summerwind, and these backpacks and all the supplies stay right here in West Boise for families who need a hand up. And if you would like to participate, there is a list at the Connection Center, and you can drop those off at the office or on Sunday mornings at the mission table in the foyer. In a few weeks, we are experiencing a neighborhood night out, a fun evening of live music, classic cars, food trucks, and an opportunity just to meet our neighbors. And we would love for you to participate in that. And if you've got a classic car at home, please let us know in the office because we would love for you to show that off this neighborhood night out. On Sunday, July 25th, next week, we're having our growing younger dinner. As we grow as a congregation, we want to be mindful of how we're reaching out to young adults in our neighborhood. And we really just want to hear from them. If they go to church, if they don't go to church, we just want to have a nice dinner and talk about spirituality, God, and church in the 21st century. So you are welcome to sign up. Sign ups for that end tomorrow so that we can order food. The free dinner, free child care. We're expecting a good crowd for that. Some of you were here this past week and noticed all that graffiti on the sidewalk when you were walking in. 
darn kids writing Bible verses on the sidewalk. We had almost 50 kids here gathered for vacation Bible school. A time of incredible laughter and joy. And our volunteers were amazing. So if you were part of Vacation Bible School last week, I would like for you to stand up so that the whole congregation can say thank you. All of our volunteers, please stand up so we can say thank you for the ministry that you've done for our children. We're really grateful. And we would love to show you a few pictures of the joy and Jesus-centered ministry on, this, on the screen right now. As a church who serves its neighborhood, we really want to emphasize, especially to our children, that Jesus calls us to serve. So our mission project for the week is asking those kids to participate in our backpack drive. And at this time, I'd like to invite the principal of one of those schools who will receive backpacks, Miss Katie Rutan, who's the principal at Frontier Elementary School, to come forward and share about the impact that our service makes in the community. Ms. Rutan. Good morning. Um, as the principal of Frontier, it is so great for me to not only have been able to be a part of VBS, um, but be a member of this church and to see the blessings that Covenant shares to its neighbors. Um, growing up in this area, the demographics of our schools in this area have changed um, dramatically and Frontier demographic I have um, 300 students and all of my students in my school receive free breakfast and free lunch um, because of our demographics and so opportunities like this with the backpacks is a huge blessing um, we are a school that I know you have partnered with Macmillan and it has been amazing to be able to watch that as a as a member of the church um, but you are also reaching other schools as well like summer wind and frontier and we receive the food boxes we received Christmas um, and our students and families are truly blessed by that and there is a great need so thank you to the kids and VBS for taking this on as a mission we we couldn't ask um, for more so thank you very much those educators in our neighborhoods holy work caring for our children on a daily basis service it's what we're here, it's what we're about here at Covenant. And part of our service to God is this hour. 
And we didn't come here to be entertained today. We came here to worship, to give God thanks, to ask God for his help as we go about our daily lives. So friends, we come to this hour and we begin our service with a time of prayer. Almighty God, thank you for pouring your spirit over those children this week, over all the volunteers. We pray your continued blessing in our lives and in the life of this world. And right now, at this holy moment, we ask, we beseech, that you would pour your spirit upon our hearts, that we may perfectly love you during this hour, and that you would transform our hearts, that we would leave with our hearts ablaze for the glory of the gospel. We pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Friends, I invite you to stand as we sing together our first hymn, Rejoice, Ye Pure in Heart. <laughs> you may be seated. As we sing praise and glory and honor to our God, in a spirit of worship, we can become mindful of our own imperfections, our own sin, our own unworthiness. Scripture tells us that if we say that we are without sin, the only person that we're deceiving is ourselves. But if we confess our sin, if we confess our dependence on God, God who is faithful and just will cleanse us from all of our sin, forgive us and clean us of all of our unrighteousness. In the spirit of humility, I invite you to pray with me the prayer of confession found on the screen behind me. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin 
and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, according to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Friends, who is in a position to condemn you? It's not your spouse or your parents or your children. The only person who can condemn you is Christ. And Christ lived for you. Christ died for you. Christ rose in glory for you. And Paul tells us that at this very moment, Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father and prays for you. The good news of the gospel is that you are loved, you are forgiven, you are called toward eternal and abundant life. What do we do with this love that God so graciously pours out upon us? I invite you to stand as we sing our responsive hymn together. Good morning. So if you were a part of Vacation Bible School, you will probably know our Bible point and Bible verse for this week at church today, too. And when we were doing our Bible point for the week, I would say it. And what did everybody respond? Does anybody know? What did we say? We're brave. We're brave. Okay, so I'm going to start by saying the Bible point, and then I want you all to say we're brave. God helps us be brave. brave. Awesome. And then I would usually say that it wasn't maybe loud enough. And Stacy would claim that people were too old. So you guys aren't too old to say it nice, right? Okay. God helps us be brave. brave. All right. What do you think, Stacy? Closer, closer. Okay. Many of our children had memorized the Bible verse, which comes from Joshua, verse one, chapter 1, verse 9. It's, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord God is with you wherever you go. And our theme song for the week, we are going to get that started here in a minute. And I'm going to invite a friendly little squirrel. Is our, is our squirrel here? Here's Roxette. Roxette from Vacation Bible School has joined us again, along with Mr. Stacy. 
and we're going to sing our theme song. I would love to have um, helpers and children if they want to come up to the front and sing along with us. the children are welcome to head to the back of the room with Miss Kathy for children's time. morning. <clears throat> Today's scripture reading is Exodus 20, 1 through 17, can be found on the overhead screen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Amen. <clears throat> Exodus 20, 1 to 17. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. 
Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your town. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Well, friends, they say that timing is everything. And if you turn around just at the right spot during that children's time song, oh, some of you are in great form for those Kodak moments. I would love to get a picture of some of you out there. They say the timing is everything. And every once in a while, it seems like the world just falls into place through no planning of your own. And then every once in a while, life comes together and you're like, oh my goodness, I wish we could have planned that differently. For instance, we invited all of our Vacation Bible School families to church today. We have a number of new folks with us. And as we go through our sermon series on the Ten Commandments, I was like, oh, if I were planning this a little better, I would not be preaching on thou shalt not commit adultery on the day that we invite all these new folks. Because some of you are thinking, what's this guy going to talk about today? In the office, there was this fun little typo that almost happened in your bulletin that said, thou shalt commit adultery during the sermon title today. Some of you are wondering, oh, is this guy going to go on and on about sex or pornography. Oh, we could spend a whole semester on those things, right? But in some ways, I'm grateful for this opportunity because we have a number of guests with us today. Timing is everything. You're catching us on a day where I'm not going to change the scripture that's previously planned because I want all of us to know that at Covenant, we take the scripture seriously and we're not going to water it down on a day where we have a number of guests with us. So if you're here for the first time, you're getting Covenant in all of its glory, the real deal as we talk about sex today. But we are in the midst of our sermon series on the Ten Commandments, and we are on You Shall Not Commit Adultery. A mindful of the story a few towns over where the minister there was going through his sermon series on the Ten Commandments. And much to his surprise, the minister catches Carl walking into the sanctuary. Luckily, the building did not catch on fire when Carl came in. He was the town drunk, and everyone knew that knew Carl knew that he didn't care about church, so the pastor was very pleased. And he goes on and on with his sermon through the Ten Commandments, and the pastor makes a beeline to the door because he wants to catch Carl and find out why he's at church today. Carl, great to see you. How was your experience at church? Well, Pastor, I want you to know that your word saved me from committing a terrible sin today. You see, I lost my hat, and I knew that Chad Lamont had a hat just like mine. So when he was going to come up for communion, I was just going to take it uh, and replace the hat that I had forgotten. And the pastor, feeling very good about himself, was like, oh, you heard the message on Thou shalt not steal, and your heart was strangely warmed. And Carl said, no, 
you got to the part on thou shalt not commit adultery. And I remembered where I left my hat. You see, we can laugh at things like this, right? And sometimes we like to laugh when that politician of the other party that we don't like gets caught in his philandering and laugh and make light of these things. But if we look at this commandment deeper, as I believe Jesus calls us to, it's not necessarily a laughing matter. And it's not just some check that you put in the box as you live your life. You see, so many of us think that these Ten Commandments are just basic check marks. Don't do this, don't steal, don't murder, don't commit adultery. There you go. And I shared this quote last week, and I want to share it again because I think Chesterton is quite on point. He writes that the curtness of the Ten Commandments is evidence not of the gloom and narrowness of religion, but on the contrary, of its liberality, of its humanity. It is shorter to state the things that are forbidden than the things that are permitted precisely because most things are permitted and only a few things are forbidden. So if adultery is the least that we can do, what is God calling us towards? Where do we find the fullness of life? Last week I shared that in Hebrew, uh, that thou shalt not murder was one of the shortest verses in the Old Testament. But tied with it is this commandment that comes to us in Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. Lo teneaf. Thou shalt not violate the wedding covenant. So if this is just the basic. What is God calling us towards? See, the Lord doesn't want you just to not commit adultery. That's the least. The Lord is calling you to a life of faithfulness, to a life of fidelity, to a life of trust. I like to think I'm at the halfway point in my pastoral career. So perhaps I've dealt with half of the families experiencing marital difficulties. So halfway through, those families that I work with, all of them experiencing issues related to cheating, it's never about the sex. It's about unmet emotions, a place where Someone is looking for love, intimacy. You see, it's never about the sex. The sex is just this gift that God has given to us to realize the enjoyment of when two individuals come together making promises to one another so that in that relationship there is deep, intimate trust and love and you see this commandment that God gives to us about not committing adultery is not just about marriage relationships don't commit adultery in some ways I think God is talking about God's self as well because there are so many things that tempt us right in this world not just other people involving our body parts, right? But this idea of temptation that someone else or something can make you happy or fulfilled. Perhaps that is the real sin, is finding happiness in all the wrong places. You see, Jesus knew that this commandment was not just about cheating in a marriage relationship, although it is. It's much more. This brings us to our second scripture passage. It comes from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 through 31. Listen again for the word of the Lord. Jesus said, you have heard it's, that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. 
But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out, throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife except on the ground of unchastity causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Are you ready for it? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Boy, timing is everything, right? Jesus is a little tough in his language, right? I opened the sermon by saying timing is everything, right? So it was February 14th, 1992, Valentine's Day, and I was in the fifth grade. Those hormones are starting to turn up a little, right? So I noticed this girl in class, Courtney. Oh, Courtney was the most beautiful woman I had ever laid eyes on uh, in fifth grade. And we had a lovely Valentine's Day. She sent me a card that had pre-printed, be mine, oh my goodness. So I go home and I get off the bus and I walk up the driveway and there's my dad. Dad, Courtney talked to me today. Why is your car full of so much stuff? Well, son, your mother and I have been talking and we think that it's better for me to move into another house. And on Valentine's Day, 1992, timing is everything, right? The story of their divorce took a nasty turn in my life. As we talk about adultery, as Jesus talks about adultery and divorce, and the pains of hell that come along with that, I have felt in my life, the hellfires of what it means to be a child of divorce. And my guess is that pretty darn close to 100% of you have experienced the pain of divorce in your own life. You know the pain. Even when divorces end amicably, you know what it's like to split holidays with the family or to see a child going through a broken relationship and navigating the cruel emotional tides that ebb and flow as we navigate messy relationships. You see, today, my friends, we're not just talking about those terrible people who cheat on their spouses. We're talking about the hell of broken relationships. And Jesus is reminding us with his very strong language about don't break these covenantal relationships because you'll experience the hell fires. We know exactly what Jesus is talking about. The hell of broken relationships. Now, I believe in marriage in the institution thereof. And I love celebrating with people when they get to 60 years of marriage. Some of you are celebrating 57 years of marriage. But there is one relationship, not here in Boise, so don't go gossiping, trying to figure out who it is after church today, that was so broken that Pastor Kevin genuinely said, I think it is best for you two to start over. That God is the God of loving relationships and this marriage is so broken that maybe it's time to just say, we're done and we're going to move on. 
You see, divorce is a reality, whether we like it or not, in our lives, a reality that some of you know more intimately than others. But friends, these divorces, these adultery, these hells that we carry in our hearts are not the end of the story. You see, Jesus talks about this commandment because he knows that we are prone to cheat, to look to other things for our happiness. And God says, Jesus says, that fidelity, truthfulness, trust, these are imperative to all of your relationships. See, one of the tragedies of marriage in modern society today is that we don't count the cost before we enter into them. By the time someone comes to me and says we're ready to get married, they've already made their plans. There's nothing that I can do or say to talk them out of it. See, marriages are entered into so easily today because we live in a consumer culture, right? Oh, this person makes me feel very good. Oh, so I'm going to put all of my hope and trust in them. We're going to get married. And then maybe five years down the road, they don't make me happy. Everyone else gets divorced. So let's just get a divorce. And voila, you see, as a culture, we've lost this sacredness of what it means to be in a covenant relationship with one another. And friends, the, I'm not just talking about marriages today. I'm talking about family relationships. I'm talking about friendships because we live in a culture so much where we use people and we love things. And in God's world, we're called to use things and love people because it's in the relationship. It's in the relationship that we discover our truest selves, not in the eyes of the other person, but in the eyes of your maker. Who hasn't been affected by divorce these days? You know the hell that Jesus was talking about. But friends, this isn't the end of the story, right? There is the best argument that Jesus isn't being literal in his words here. Because if Jesus was being literal in his words, every 14-year-old boy would already be thrown into hell now, right? If you look at another person in lust, oh, you've already committed adultery. And you know what the ancient Israelites did adul to adulterers, right? They stoned them. See, Jesus is using this strong language to remind us that we love people. We treat them as God's chosen people for the sake of relationships. And when they break, what does God do? God steps in to seek healing, to seek wholeness, to seek restoration. Because this is what God does with me and you. Jesus says we are all guilty of adultery every time we look to something else for our fulfillment. So how do we pursue fidelity to God, to others in our life? Perhaps this is familiar. We begin by recognizing the image of God in our neighbor. By recognizing the image of God in our spouse whose neck we'd like to wring at the end of a petty little fight, right? That person is made in the image of God. How do we treat God? The second is like it. We recognize the image of God in ourselves. You are made to be like God. And what does God do with people? He loves them deeply. Even when a people cheat on him, God never gives up. You can read a whole book about it called the book of Hosea in the Old Testament. God doesn't give up on us. So what are you going to do with this image of God in yourself? You're going to prostitute yourself to the next thing who makes you feel better because we are all tempted. It's all about timing, right? And today, most likely, you are going to be tempted by something or someone to steal you away from your true partner of God. Perhaps today, someone is tempting you through the lust of your body. Let's take the 
Let's take the commandment as it is. Maybe someone is tempting you with the lust of power. Oh, just join my political party. We'll solve all the world's problems together, right? Maybe the world is tempting you through the lust of greed. Just a few more dollars in my bank account, and we can take that nice vacation and we'll be happy, right? What is tempting you today? So friends, take care of your relationships. Nurture them. Parents, friends, church members. The image of God is found in one another. Don't commit adultery in that emotional relationship. Don't cheat on your friends through lies and gossip. And finally, my friends, if we want to take this commandment seriously, that the one who loves you deeply, intimately, longs for you, cares for you, turn back to the source of your love that you may find light in life. And friends, I encourage you to invest in this thing called church, not just financially, that's just the tip of the iceberg, but if you can invest your heart in a community that is centered and focusing your attention back to your original lover, friends, you will find your life. So friends, let's cut those coals of divorce, of lust. Let's cut them away from us, for they will burn us like the hellfires that Jesus talks about. And turn to embrace the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, my friends. Amen. Friends, there are, there's an offering box in the back. You're also welcome to place your offerings, prayer requests on the table during this time of offering. You can place them there after the service. But friends, allow this gift of music to be a time where you meditate and offer your heart to the original lover, our Lord Jesus Christ. find 
someone who's true. Thank the Lord, he's been doubly good to you. Thank the Lord, he's been doubly good to you. Friends, you may be seated. We are a praying church. Today we pray for our friend Shanna, who's uh, helping her father through some medical difficulties out in Rupert. We pray for her. As we think about relationships and fidelity in relationships and cheating, there are some, uh, I'm not aware of anyone specific, but just statistically. Some of you are going through a rough patch in marriages. Uh, I want you to know that God loves you, this church loves you, I have a little training and counseling, and if you need some help in your marriage relationship, reach out confidentially. I'm a safe person to help folks work through and willing to point people to uh, counselors and therapists who are better at it than I. But we pray for our relationships because these things matter. and as. Uh, Kay's song said, if you've got someone in your life that you can love and be yourself with, thanks be to God, because God's been doubly good to you. I want a church that nurtures those relationships in all of our lives. We pray for our nation. We pray that we're able to get out of this pandemic. Friends, we're not there yet. We've come a long ways as a congregation, um, but we're not there yet. So thank you for your patience as we learn how to live with one another with diverse opinions. Our church has been phenomenal. And one day we're going to look past this, back at this, and smile, knowing that the Lord was with us. We give thanks for all those kids who are in here. We pray that the Lord touches them, uses them for the sake of the power of love and power of Jesus in this world. Friends, let's pray. Lord, we give you thanks for this day, for this opportunity to experience love. We give you thanks for the opportunity to focus on faithfulness in relationships and marriage relationships and friendships and church relationships. Lord, what does it mean to be faithful and help us to be faithful? Because, Lord, there is much joy when we get through the hard times together. Lord, we pray for families here of all stripes and colors, that you would strengthen them to be a reflection of the relationship that you have with us, full of joy and endurance and strength. For the kids of EBS, for the kids here today, bless them, keep them, help us to strengthen them May you use them for the sake of your glory. And we pray for our nation, almighty God. We pray that we would get beyond COVID, that we would get beyond our petty political differences and find ourselves united so that indeed this world may know that we are a city on a hill where people are cared for, where no one is hungry, where everyone has a place to lay their head in comfort. Help us to be that kind of people. And Lord, we pray for our friend Shanna and her dad, Dick. Bring healing, wholeness, and strength to mind, body, and spirit. And to all of those lifting up 
our loved ones in the silence of our hearts. Be with, be with us now and evermore as we pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in glory. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand and sing as we proclaim together our closing hymn, To God Be the Glory. Remain standing for the benediction. Friends, don't commit adultery. Basic sense, right? But to find your fullest self, go out into these walls, into the mission field, and experience the glory of God, the trueness of your true lover in life by being faithful to your partner, to your spouse, to your friends, to your church. And may you know the blessing of true faithfulness. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
着。